Welcome to your Nexus 2 tutorial. This video covers the general workflow for capturing data, which will include the basic workflow for preparing your system and capturing data. Please note that we will not go into much detail in each part of the process, but you will find links to more detailed tutorials in the description below. Before starting Nexus, confirm your Vicon system and any third-party devices are powered on and connected. If you are not already live when you open Nexus, click the Go Live button. Next, select the appropriate system configuration from the drop-down list. You should see all cameras connect with a green play button. Any third-party devices will appear under the Devices section. You can add any other devices by right-clicking on Devices and adding the appropriate device. If you have force plates, this is a good time to zero your force plates. I'm going to start by selecting all the cameras and switching my workspace over to the camera view, just to make sure I haven't left any markers or anything else that may contribute reflections in the volume. After confirming my capture volume is clean, I'm ready to mask my cameras. Navigate to the System tab in the Tools panel. In the Mask Cameras section, hit Start and wait for any remaining noise to be covered up with masks. Once all the noise has been covered, I can hit Stop. I am now ready to calibrate my cameras. Move to the Calibrate Cameras section. You can quickly check that the wand selected is the correct wand you will be using. Hit Start and then begin your wand wave. If you have auto stop checked, your cameras will automatically stop calibrating once they reach the specified refinement frames. You can then place the wand at the origin and return to the computer. I will quickly check to confirm the calibration errors are below the accepted threshold for this lab. The colors will also give an indication of the quality of the calibration, with green being good, fading to yellow and red as the calibration error increases. When I switch back to the 3D perspective, I can see the cameras are all calibrated relative to each other, however they appear to be floating out in space. Next I need to set my origin to define my global coordinate system. Click Start under Set Volume Origin, then Set, and you will see the cameras snap into place. It is typically recommended to set the floor plane by using markers placed throughout the volume, rather than relying on the levelness of the wand. You'll find this option in the Advanced Set Volume Origin section. I'll remove the wand and place six markers around the center of the volume. So the floor plane is positioned at the base of my markers rather than through the center. I need to input a Z offset that corresponds to my marker size. In this case, I'm using 14 millimeter markers with a two millimeter base. So the offset would be the radius seven plus the base, 2, giving negative 9 millimeters. I can manually select them by clicking Start and then selecting all of my markers. I can then hit Set. You may notice your floor plane shift slightly as I hit Set. The system is now ready to capture data, but first I need to set up the session folder into which the data will be saved. Using the Data Management tab, navigate to the correct database and patient classification. Then create your subject folder, and finally the session folder. Now that we have our session folder, we can add our subject and choose the labeling template we will be using. If you have taken subject measurements required for your model, you can enter them into the parameters now. Now is also a good time to save your subject. Now that I have set up my subject, I'm ready to collect the static trial which will be used to calibrate my labeling template. I'll navigate over to the Subject Preparation tab and have the subject stand in the center of the volume in the static pose. Correct labeling does not matter at this point as the labeling template has not been calibrated to this specific subject, but I do want to confirm all the markers are visible for at least one frame. 
The labeling will improve after we process the static trial. I'll click Start, collect a few frames, then click Stop. The trial will be named Cal01 and will automatically open. Since Nexus only records raw camera data, I will not see any markers initially, so I will need to run the reconstruct pipeline. Next, I will run the auto initialize pipeline, which will auto label the static pose and run the calibration operations. It's a good idea to check the marker labels at this time. If you notice any incorrect marker labels, you will need to correct them and run the calibration operations again. If the marker labels are correct, I can also run the static model at this time. Now that my static trial has been processed, I will save it, then go live to collect my dynamic trials. I'll navigate to the Capture tab. If applicable, select the correct trial type from the dropdown. Give the trial a name and add any description or notes. It's also a good idea to double check the desired data sources are checked. In this case, I'm also collecting device data, which includes the IMUs and force plates, as well as the video data, which is my view camera. Then I can hit start and collect my trial. I'll continue in this fashion for all the movements I need to collect. When I have finished collecting all of my data, I will need to transfer the IMU and video files, and then I can begin to process my data. Both of these topics will be covered in another tutorial. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions about your hardware or software, don't hesitate to contact us at support at